Good morning, Grace Church and others listening in. It's Jamie here, and we're continuing with our psalm of the day today. Uh, today we're going to be reading and thinking about Psalm 53. Why don't you turn to it in your Bible? Let me read, and I'm reading from the New International Version. For the director of music, according to Mahalath, a mascal of David. The fool says in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt, and their ways are vile. There is no one who does good. God looks down from heaven on the sons of men to see if there are any who understand, any who seek God. Everyone has turned away. They have together become corrupt. There is no one who does good, not even one. Will the evildoers never learn, those who devour my people as men eat bread and who do not call on God? There they were, overwhelmed with dread, when, where there was nothing to dread. God scattered the bones of those who attacked you. You put them to shame, for God despised them. Oh, that salvation for Israel would come out of Zion. When God restores the fortunes of his people, let Jacob rejoice and Israel be glad. We're going to quickly think about that psalm with the help today, not of Spurgeon, but with the help of Matthew Henry. Henry notes how this psalm is almost identical to Psalm 14, and he says the scope of this psalm is to convince us of our sins, to set us a blushing and to set us a trembling because of them. He points out eight things in this psalm which we'll go through quickly. First of all the fact of sin. God is a witness to our sin. He looks down from heaven and sees all the sinfulness of men's hearts and lives. All this is open before him. Secondly, Henry points to the fault of sin. It is iniquity, he says, verses one and four, an unrighteous thing, a thing in which there is no good. Next, the fountain of sin. How is it that men are so bad? Surely, Henry says, it is because there is no fear of God before their eyes. They say in their hearts, there is no God. Next, Henry points to the folly of sin. He is a fool who harbours such corrupt thoughts. The workers of iniquity, whatever they pretend to, have no knowledge. They do not know God. Fifth, Henry talks about the filthiness of sin. Sinners are corrupt, verse 1. Their nature is spoiled. Whatever neatness uh, proud sinners pretend to, it is certain, Henry says, that wickedness is the greatest nastiness in the world. Sixth, in this psalm we have the fruit of sin. Henry says, See to what a degree of barbarity it brings men at last. See the cruelty to their brethren. They eat them up as they eat bread. This is the fruit of sin. Seventhly, Henry says, Look at the fear and shame that attend sin in this psalm, verse 5. There were they in great fear who had made God their enemy. Their own guilty consciences frightened them and filled them with horror. But lastly, uh, and with joy and hope, see the faith of the saints and the, their hope and power touching this great evil, verse 6. There will come a saviour, a great salvation, a salvation from sin. Oh, that it might be hastened, for it will bring in glorious and joyful times. There were those in the Old Testament times that looked and hoped, that prayed and waited for this redemption. Such salvations were often wrought, and yet they were all looking forward to, all typical of the everlasting triumph of the glorious church, as we now can see and know a great salvation that Jesus has won for us. Why don't you spend a few moments confessing sin and thanking God for the great salvation that there is in and through our Lord Jesus Christ.